Hello, doing a uh, quick tutorial, quickish, for the original turret controller. So, basic example, let's just use the demo pawns right off the bat. Yeah, look around. Barrels can only poke in so far. And you can shoot stuff. Swapping to E, here we have multiple turrets, all controlled at the same time, only firing off when they're pointing in the right area each with their own limits. So, let's uh, see how to actually do this. So we will uh, open this turret demo and take a look at it. First of all, you got various components. You got your base, your turret, your barrel, and in this case it's got a little optics, base, turret, and barrel as well. And then in the middle after each one, we got a spring arm, a camera, we got a camera controller to control the camera, and we got a turret controller to control the turret. This turret controller has turret arrays, which it uses for each of these two separate turrets. One for the big main turret, one for the little optics, which we just gave settings to look at stuff more quickly. No bolts are fired out of that. Maybe you'd have a sighting laser or something. And each turret array basically just has rotation options and settings. That's fairly straightforward. So we will right-click blueprint class on custody turret bp now here's our testing turret we'll go to turret controller meshes we need a mesh so we need a base a turret a barrel we'll skip doing multiple ones right now for this uh, active example make sure that each of our meshes is set to the desired location Though, as a note, each one has to be zeroed out relative rotation. So, the barrel will rotate around the Y axis, or the side axis, so it needs to be zeroed out on this. Each of these needs to basically be zeroed out from the beginning. The turret will rotate around its Z axis. If these things are like your stuff's tilted and you want to rotate them by default, then the best option, for those who don't know, we'll open up it. Alright, or do the base as an example. So the base is forward axis is here, its side axis is here, the up and down axis is obviously there. You can see it here in the lower left corner of the mesh viewing area. If this is not the right rotation, if X is not forward and Y is right and such, then you can use import rotation settings. And you can tweak them here so it would import things at a different orientation for the same pivot. If this is not an asset you made and imported yourself, but you got on the marketplace so you don't have an asset on your local hard drive, then you can go here to Asset Actions, Export, Export it, and then you could go and set the... either directly just import drag it in itself, or you can go up here to the Import and look for the source path and set it that way to connect to that thing we just exported, and then when you either click re-import up here, depending on your asset type, or here, right-click imported assets re-import, it'll re-import with the different transforms. I think in UE5, you might be able to do this without having to bother with the export-import, but for most versions of Unreal Engine 4, at least, that's how you do it. Quickly. All right, so going back here to this, we've got all of these things have the proper rotation. X axis is each of their forwards, so rotations are all good. Next, we're going to want to, onto the base, add a spring arm. Spring arm goes up here. On the end of that, we'll add a camera. Camera goes there. Now, we're going to go to this turret controller folder and add the camera controller and the turret controller. So the camera controller, we'll just look at that. It uses a spring arm. It basically just controls the rotation of a spring arm. So it uses the suffix approach. Pretty much all of this does. So here we have spring arm is here is what it wants to control. And at the same time, we can look at turret controller. Well, for our first turret array, we will make one now for these turrets. And here we can see their default settings. We'll not touch that right now. Down here under tar targeting, though, you'll see it's using a camera with the suffix zero. So we're going to take spring arm. I hit F2 for easy rename. Or I can double click slowly. That's always more annoying. I prefer F2 for that reason. And hit zero. So 
With this, we have camera zero and spring arm zero. Spring arm zero, the camera controller will now control its rotation. And camera zero, the turret controller will now use that to know where the heck it should actually point its turrets towards. So if you have a character and you want to have a hat that's a turret, you don't need to bother with a camera controller. The turret controller just needs a camera. It doesn't care what controls the camera. So turret controller now, we want to make sure that the uh, base meshes and stuff are all what we want. In this case, we'll just replace the root with that base mesh here. So we'll call this the turret base one. You can throw whatever else you want on it. It just has to have base one, then turret one. Barrel one, and we'll also just throw in an arrow and call this emitter one. This is where stuff would be spawned from, and this is the final point that it's trying to make sure is aimed right at whatever the camera is pointing at. So with this, we have our basics. Now the um, camera controller, we need to actually give it some inputs. So event turn. As a default engine input access event, you can create your own in your own project. If you want to know how to do these, look up input access events. There's lots of tutorials you can easily find for them. Very useful. Highly recommend them. Now we'll get a look up. And now we'll take our camera controller and add look at direction. So we got our yaw input or turning, side to side movement, and our looking up, which is looking up. So now we will take our testy turret, drop it here in the level. We'll take this default one in the level here and disable the auto possess so that we can quickly go and auto possess our new testy turret to test it. Bam, we got a testy turret. We didn't set the, the rotation limits though, so it can look all the way down through itself, all the way up, cause problems, and it's really slow. Can't shoot anything either. What fun is that? So we'll take this emitter. Get world transform. Spawn actor from class. And with this, we'll just create a projectile. There's one. I got a lot in this project. And right click, left mouse button. Uh, you'd type your as possibly to have a custom event set up for this, an input event for which includes your, you know left mouse button, controller, right trigger, whatever, or you could set both up directly here, but however it goes, however you want to control something, just set up right here to spawn. And then let's go to the turret controller itself and let's work on those rotation limits. So the turret, oops, did not mean to do that. So the turret, we want to be able to spin full 360. There's nothing obstructing it. The barrel, we want it to go down maybe 10 degrees before it would hit the edge, and up, let's say, 70. So we'll go to turret controller, limit barrel rotation. The turret rotation, it goes all the way around. Nope, we don't want to limit that. Limit the barrel rotation. Yeah, we want to limit that. So we'll check this. The turret rotations, it's that's unchecked, so those don't matter. The barrel up limit, so we're going to set the 70. Down limit, 10 is good. Horizontal rotation speed, we want this to be faster, so... Let's set this to like 260. This is how many degrees per second. So if you set this to 360, it could spin all the way around once in one second. Vertical rotation, 280. And with this, and you can also, if you want to do custom changes to the names, you could set prefixes there, a few other options, but active or not, is the barrel even pointing and being updated. So now, our turret moves much faster. It doesn't look down beyond the edge that we would want it to. It can't look up more than a certain amount. Not that the current camera and stuff settings will work with that. Uh, for anybody doing stuff like this, if you want turrets to look up, a good suggestion is either make sure that your collisions are properly set up with the spring arm and its probe size so that it won't want to collide with this stuff. Or you can make a system that as you look up manually will on a curve shorten the spring arm so that as you are looking up, the spring arm would naturally shorten, and the camera would be up there. Depends on exactly how you do this for your given actor, but collisions and probe size are simple. But then the camera could potentially get down here, which is still blocking up your sight before it reaches that point, and the probe would pull it up to that point. So some manual efforts like that I can recommend. By the way, so with this, we've pretty much shown how to make the basic turret. However, we got 
much more complex behavior that we can potentially get out of this. Uh, using this one as an example, the second demo here. Since this is the one that's got three, technically four turrets, because there is the little uh, optics turret on top of one of these, though only three that are actually firing, and they only fire while pointing at stuff. What if you have a battleship or a spaceship, and you got 10 or 20 turrets on it that you want to use? Well, this is an example of how you would do that. It's pretty much exactly the same. We've basically just got the starting setup of that default turret with the main turret and a little... So, turret one, barrel one, yada yada, middle one. Then there's a little optics, but that's just base two, turret two, barrel zero, I mean barrel two, emitter two. And then over here we got like base three, turret three, barrel three, emitter three. Each of these is just its own turret. And in the turret controller, we have multiple of these in the turret array. We just created a few extras, so let's get rid of those extras, but yeah. So we got four turrets here that this thing's controlling, and each one is just sitting here with its own settings. So number two doesn't have the rotation limits and stuff because that's that little optics. But each of these other turrets, we added limit rotation to the turret 122, so it can only rotate to the point that it's right next to each of these, but not clipping into the other turrets. So that's the basics of that. However, you will notice that the uh, forward axis of these bases is on the flat side. But in this case, we want all three of these to nicely fit each other, so we need the forward to actually be along a corner. Now, you could uh, re-import and have a different version of each mesh with the corner versus the initial forward thing, but if you're doing a quick and rough thing in a game and you're not too worried about the performance, you can always just throw in an extra spacer mesh. In this case, it's just a random cube that we made it, set it to be invisible, not rendering in game, disabled all collisions. And this cube we just set here and adjusted its own rotation to be the newly wanted forward axis. So now our turret, sitting on top of that little spacer cube, is pointing forward in its default zero rotation. Since the turret is caring about, this mesh is effectively having its relative rotation set, so because we've got that spacer that's handling this initial offsetting of the rotation for it, the turret is at zero, despite being technically offset from the base. But yeah, this is slightly less optimized, so depends on the needs for your game. In this case, all of this is still being controlled by that single turret controller. Next, you might wonder why they only fire when the turret's pointed in a given direction. Well, there's a few different uh, variables you can find inside the turret controller itself. In this case, uh, our method for firing is we created an array using these emitters for the turrets. We just made a little array there on begin play. And then when we left click the mouse button, it just goes through that array and excludes the one that we could have uh, adjusted for the emitter for the um, optics, excluding that, it will then check the turret controller and get the turret pointed at target's array value. This is an array which each of these indexes will match a given here, turret array. So turret array index zero, this is for our turret one. If that is true, then it means this is pointed roughly at the target. If it's false, then it means it's not. So only if true do we bother firing. Simple enough. Um, here we have the pointed at freedom is currently under information variable set to 5 degrees. So and if we set this to 20 degrees, then the turrets will start firing if they get within 20 degrees of our pointed at location. Here we have 5, so it only starts uh, firing once we're pretty accurately pointed where we want. So... And for the example, this turret that's right next to the camera currently is not within 5 degrees, so it won't fire. Now it is. So, it's just an information variable that you can get access to in order to uh, adjust your firing setup. So hopefully this has provided you some uh, good basic information on the basics of how the turret controller works. Basically, you're just setting things up, uh, setting up a basic naming convention, setting your things so they've got the right default rotations, and then you just set up some basic options and create a turret array for your turret using the given uh, rotation settings and stuff that you want for it. And for projectile firing and stuff, you more or less just handle that yourself in the event graph. So, if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to post them down below. Uh, hopefully you'll have a good productive weekend. Stay healthy, everyone. Until next time, Jericon 4 out.